with a rockin' soundtrack, a slew of neon colors, and a heavy load of mecha tropes. Bulk Slash came at a time in the Saturn's life cycle when many were doubting the 3D prowess of the system. Packing a blistering amount of 3D and 2D assets, the game would couple arcade score attack gameplay with a heavy dose of player control, all the while topped off with all the makings of a dating sim. But like many Japanese exclusives, this title would gain little notoriety here in the West. With a growing following 20 years later, it's past time that more people knew about this awesome title. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Southern Sega Gentleman, and this is Bulk Slash, a Sega Saturn Spotlight. Published by Hudson Soft and developed by CA Productions, Bulk Slash was a 3D mech shooter of sorts that made its way to Japanese store shelves in late 97. The development team consisting of a number of devs who had worked on titles like Thunder Force 2 and 3 in the past. The tight controls that the game enjoys and the arcade playstyle reflect that lineage. Limited game overs, complete score resets, leaderboards, time pickups, and end of level rewards based on performance are all on show here. As far as the actual story is concerned, you'll be placed in the role of that one mech pilot who's supposed to save the entire solar system. You'll wage war against a wave of faceless enemies, and very much akin to a game developed by Treasure, be pitted off against boss after boss after boss. Don't worry too much though, you won't be completely alone. Not only will you have your trusty mission briefing guy to help keep you company, but also a slew of female navigators to help guide you and generally scream at you throughout your journey. There's also a bit about childhood friends and such, but I don't want to spoil too much for you. Honestly though, that's about as deep as it'll get on your first run. Something of a refreshing choice included here is a decent degree of player choice. No, you can't go out and get a custom paint job for your mech but you are given a fair degree of choice in what order you tackle the seven stages of the game. The devs really did throw in a number of game mechanics that reward replayability. Now at its most basic, Bulk Slash is a relatively short game, with most people probably being able to make a complete run in under an hour. That's not to say the game doesn't have longevity. In fact, there's plenty of replay value here, and it was actually built in that way. But we'll get back to that here in a bit. When it comes to actually going to war, Bulk Slash gives you options. Between your mech and jet fighter form, which thankfully can be toggled between on the fly as many times as you want, you'll be dishing out loads of punishment on all the baddies via a number of different approaches. As far as firepower, both forms grant you a machine gun and a special weapon, a lob grenade for your mech, and a barrage of guided rockets for your jet. As well, both of your specials gradually power up, so long as you're not shooting enemies or taking any hits. Lastly, you'll be grabbing up plenty of pickups from the ashes of your fallen foes. Most of the common enemy types will only leave extra points, but the hard to beat ones leave you shield boost and sometimes a pickup weapon. Three types in all, a flamethrower, homing laser, and this one that shoots out orbs of energy. Only the first two are really useful though. Now one major hurdle that faced a lot of third person and first person games during the fifth generation was mapping out a comfortable control scheme in a 3D environment. Now yes, eventually we got analog sticks, in fact two of them on most consoles, but it took well into the sixth generation for most games to actually get a comfortable control scheme that worked. Well the devs went for a less is more approach when they designed Bulk Slash's control scheme, and they most definitely got it right in my opinion. All of your movement along the x-axis is mapped out to the d-pad, and the shoulder buttons are utilized for turning. That and you only really use three face buttons. This limited but well thought out control scheme is made all the better when coupled with the Japanese style pad. In sum, for once, it's a lesson in joy rather than frustration. So what about the visuals? Not only do they put the idea that the Saturn can't do 3D well to bed, but they also showcase the amazing anime inspired art style the devs were going for. Bright neon colors, amazing mech and boss designs with a mixture of 2D and 3D elements. Now Bulk Slash really does push the Saturn's hardware at times. In fact, sometimes it pushes it just a bit too far. Frame rate drops happen quite frequently while you're in the middle of combat, and at times the frame rate slows to a crawl. It's not game breaking by any means, but it really can put a damper on your groove. The best visuals in the game most certainly go to the bosses, however. Introduced via a live news feed akin to something right out of Robocop or Starship Troopers, you'll have an up-close view as these numerous behemoths appear, taking countless forms from this simple quadruped monstrosity to a god Gundam wannabe, to whatever the hell this is supposed to be. Going about taking them down is a chore and trial and error sometimes, as every one of them have distinct weak spots, but once accomplished it's quite rewarding. This also highlights another spot where issues start to pop up though. Draw distance. I mean, come on, lots of games during the fifth generation had draw distance issues. 
Plenty of games utilized a mechanic like fog that would mask it. Prime example being something along the lines of Silent Hill where they made it work into effect. But this isn't Silent Hill. It's a major issue here because the game is not slow paced whatsoever. Enemies, especially some of the bosses, come at you moving near warp speed, and avoiding them can be an almost impossible task. Out of every issue in the game, it's honestly the most noticeable, but given a little bit of practice and memorization, the issue can become a lot less pronounced. So what about that replay value I was talking about earlier? Well, at its foundation, Bulk Slash is a very arcade style game, but it has a reward system that's quite different from most. See, throughout six of the seven levels, you'll come across all these floating pink helmets with the acronym MISS hovering above them. These are your navigators, and also your potential romantic partners. Yeah, the anime tropes keep rolling in with this quasi-dating sim mechanic. On your first run through, it won't much matter, so feel free to ditch one for another. I mean, you can only really fit one of them in your cockpit at a time. But on your next run, keep the same navigator until the credits roll. Just by doing that, you'll receive a second special ending FMV. Also, all the points that you would have earned that run accumulate into experience with that navigator and go towards leveling them up. Each one of them have three levels, with each level granting you a special image showing off your favorite navi. There's also a special boost that comes with maxing out a navigator, but I've never been able to max one out. I always end up having to use at least one continue on the last stage, and that resets your score. So yeah, just bad luck on my part, I suppose. One last thing about the ladies. If you max all six of them out, then you'll unlock a seventh navigator that grants you infinite ammo for picked up weapons. At least that's what the net says. One of the many criticisms I hear about Bulk Slash is that it's not really a mech game, that it's really an arcade game with mechs thrown in it. Well, if your only experience with a mech game up until this point is something along the lines of Armored Core, Mech Warrior, even the Front Mission series, then yeah, you're probably not going to be completely enthusiastic about the level of realism or customizability for that matter. But that's the great thing about it. Mech games don't have to be based in any degree of realism. The whole notion of a five-story tall robot going ham on whatever stands in its way isn't realistic in the slightest. Thankfully, the devs knew this and made a game that perfectly melds arcade gameplay with the awesome feeling of piloting a Veritech fighter right out of Macross. From the intro FMV till the end of game credits roll, countless references to the mech genre can be found in this title, and it's a welcome change from all the droves of mech sims already available. Overall, this game was a blast for me to revisit. The gameplay is quick and frantic at times, all the while making you feel like a complete badass shredding through all the blips on your radar. Replayability is a key selling factor for this title, and after your first completion, you'll face off against even more enemies and swapped up target locations on each level. The greatest thing about this game, in my opinion though, is the quick turnaround time. You can run a whole playthrough in under an hour, and that's with dying once or twice. With the addition of a save function, all your progression from one run to the next will be saved for when you decide to take another crack at it. Now while I know not everyone will enjoy this game, especially with its ramped up difficulty in later stages and subsequent playthroughs, I honestly feel like this is one of the best titles on the console, and easily showcases what the Saturn could do with the right developers behind it. So go ahead and pick yourself up a copy, or find some other way to play it. Regardless, just enjoy this lesser known masterpiece of a title. If you're anything like me, you won't be disappointed. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, I got some buddies I'm about to roll through the credits. They really do some awesome videos. Go give them some love as well. Regardless, this is the SSG, signing out.